Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may be, by your, be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 33, verses 12 to 22, responsively by whole verse. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love. Pluck their lives from death, to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. A reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the world, worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, and as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that was found, has foundation, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of pro procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith without re having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
if you believe and I believe, and we together pray, the Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. And set God's people free. Set God's holy people free. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that when they open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you again. Sometimes I feel like Jack Nichols, Nicholson, who uh, said in one movie, I'm back. <laughs> Yes, I am. But it's awfully good to come with you, and I'm, I'm glad your pastor has asked me to do that. So I'm happy to be with you. You know, back in the 1920s, a very popular stage adaptation of Bram Stoker's vampire novel, Dracula, toured England. And at the end of the, each performance, the actor-manager came back on the stage to talk briefly with the audience. He hoped, he said, that the play wouldn't give them bad dreams at night. So when they got home, when the lights had been turned out and they started to worry about things that might be hiding under the curtains or peeking through a window, he advised them just to pull yourself together and remember that after all, there are such things. <laughs> In spite of the current popularity, of the vampire theme in films, TV, and books, you don't have to be afraid of, of getting bitten by one. There are vampires in South America and other places like that uh, where you might have a little bit of trouble, but there aren't any real Dracula-like vampires who have lived for centuries, sleeping in their coffins by day, feasting by night. The monsters that populate old horror movies or who are found in today's men who are vampires and women who love them genre, <laughs> don't get out into the real world in which we live. But that is small comfort in the real world. There are such things as terrorists trying to blow people up, religious conflict, melting glaciers and ice caps, high unemployment, divisive political climate, and other threats. 
and with all of that to deal with a few vampires would hardly be noticed. There are some very frightening things, though, alive in our world. They can attack you right out in broad daylight, and they won't be scared off by a little garlic or a crucifix. Jesus says to us today, the opening lines of our gospel, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now stay with that for a second. Jesus said that in a world whose problems differed from ours in detail, but were just as threatening as ours, and it would be easy to think that these words of Jesus as a kind and soothing reassurance that parents may give their frightened children at bedtime, like, oh, honey, there are no monsters under the bed or hiding in the closet. The shadows on the wall, they won't hurt you. Your mother and I are right here in the living room. You're safe. But there are such things. And there were going to be such things for Jesus' disciples. What was going to happen to Jesus, his arrest and execution, because those in power wanted to hold on to their privileges, was a sign of what the followers of Jesus might expect. They could get caught up in economic and political turmoil of the world. If they proclaimed and lived the message of Jesus, they shouldn't be surprised if there were really people out there to get them. Then, too, we shouldn't think that all dangers are outside us. If we get in the habit of thinking of ourselves as what Jesus called little flock, we can, if we're not careful, develop a kind of mentality that is found in a number of superiority religions, those who think it's either their way or the highway, everybody else be damned, and it's the few righteous us against the evil world. But our own sin and the ease with which we yield to temptation can be as much of a problem as anything that the rest of the world can throw at us. Sin is, in fact, the basic threat, the sins of the rest of the world and also ours. Now, Jesus isn't telling the disciples that there are not such things, but in spite of this, he says, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In other words, God's purpose, God's promise to his people cannot be defeated or stopped by persecution or poverty or conflict or by your own weakness or unfaithfulness. 2,000 years later, the reign of God has still not come to its fullness. Nevertheless, Jesus' words are not just another of those attempts to comfort frightened children or people who have been hit by some personal tragedy. When Jesus taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer, he told us to ask God that thy kingdom come. And the church has not been praying that in vain down through the centuries. What are we saying when we say this? We're saying that whatever our Heavenly Father, whenever our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit, so that through the Holy Spirit's grace, we believe in God's holy word, we strive to live godly lives here and hereafter in eternity. When we believe God's promise of forgiveness and acceptance for Jesus' sake, when we put our trust in God revealed in Jesus Christ, we are reconciled with God and his kingdom becomes a reality, reality for us. In God's future, it will be a reality for all the world, but even now, it is a spiritual truth that can determine right now our priorities and direct our lives. So, if the reign of God determines our priorities, then we can begin to understand Jesus' words in our text about selling our possessions and, and giving alms. 
It isn't that possessions or wealth are evil in themselves because, because everything God has created is good. But we are not to hoard up wealth or just use it for our own pleasure or security. Instead, these gifts of God are to be used for the purposes of the kingdom, which isn't the same thing as saying, give all your money to the church. Jesus doesn't tell us to throw our money down a rat hole as if it were something that defiled us. Instead, we are to give alms to share with those in need in the same way when he tells us a wealthy ruler to sell all that he owns to distribute money to the poor and follow Jesus. Same thing. Our earthly possessions are threatened by thieves and natural process of decay, or to put a different twist on it, if you will, the one who dies with the most toys still dies. Or my favorite expression is, have you ever seen a U-Haul follow a hearse? <laughs> it makes little sense to put uh, those things first. Our primary concern is to be about the state of our relationship with God. That treasure is not some store of merits. And we use it to stay in God's good graces. Oh, I got a gold star here for doing this. But just the opposite. It is the gift of faith that God gives us freely and the love and the hope that flow from it like a river. And we have this treasure when we believe God's holy word and live godly lives. The reign of God is, in short, to direct our lives. The Father does not give us the kingdom just so we can sit around in idleness and say, oh, look, I'm saved. Okay, that's it. No. Jesus tells us, be dressed for action. It's a command, not just good advice. Talk about action can call up the idea never far away that we've got to do our share in order to earn our place in God's realm. And then we've got another thing to worry about because how will we know when we've done enough? But you see, this misses the point of Jesus' words that begin our text. Quote, it is your father's good pleasure to give give you the kingdom. In other words, God has already determined to make the followers of Jesus honored citizens in his kingdom. So do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Instead, let the knowledge that you are one of God's people give you courage to act as God's ministers to further that kingdom on earth. You might say, but what if I make a mistake? What if I make the wrong choice when I'm faced with a critical decision? And it's true, sometimes we won't take the best course of action or know what the best course of action is. But again, Jesus' assurance that God has already chosen us makes it possible for us to decide and act in uncertain situations. Of course, we should pray about such choices think them through as, as clearly as possible, and when possible, to seek guidance from trustworthy people. We want to act in ways that will indeed further the kingdom of God's kingdom. But when all is said and done, every time we can act with the knowledge that our relationship with God is secure. The idea that salvation is entirely God's gift that we receive through faith alone, you see, is not just an abstract doctrine from a book that's gathering dust in a seminary. When we understand its implications, it's a tremendously freeing, liberating message in spite of the fact that there are such things Draculas in the world running around. Threats roaming around the earth. 
and in our lives. We are freed from our fears about what may happen and free to act as God's people. So, if the Son of Man makes you free, Jesus says in another place, you will, you will be free indeed. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise now as together we say our words of the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people found on page 7 in your booklet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authorities in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight, have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We especially pray for those on our prayer list, Jim Lucas, Barbara Mahoney, Ron Steen, Thomas Ella, Sandra Fry, Mia McCarrick, Ann Parler, Craig, John Walker, Noel Tuck, Hill Michaels, Shuri Rivera, Linda Matassa, Patty Mason, Bob Katz, Layman Black, Nancy Kashura, Randy Comstock, Bryce Turner, Pauline Wise, Jerry Lowe, Diane, Be Diane, Bill West, Herb Sheets, Mike Browning, Eric West, Jim Moore, Deb Gantz, Donald McCleary, Joanna Ross, Barbara Butler, Bob Posh, Julie, Karen Brandell, Sharon, Evelyn, Jim Niddle, Sarah Kirk, Lynn Watson, Bobby Wells, Manessa Middleton, Sue Mantagna, 
Catherine McGraw, Bill Turlington, Bob Granis, and Lorraine Carr. We also pray for those in, who are serving in the military known to us, Quinn Barber, Kevin Murphy, Connor Warlow, Daniel Olnick. Give to the departed eternal rest. With light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others and for the peace in Ukraine. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share God's peace with one another. Good morning, I'm Dave Kemper, Director of Music here at St. Martha's. Uh, just a reminder, on Thursday evening, Celtic to Classical will be here. Uh, if you, how many of you have heard them perform? Quite a few hands up. If you have not, put it on your calendar, 7.30, uh, Thursday evening. They will be here. They are a phenomenally talented group. Jonah Kim, who is a double uh, Grammy Award winner, will also be part of the concert this week, so it will be one not to, to miss. Uh, it is by donation when you enter. They usually ask about $15 a person. Again, if you were going to go to a concert of this caliber, it would be much, much more. So Thursday, 730, bring your neighbors. We want to fill the church. They perform at three churches a summer, and we've been fortunate for the last seven years that they love St. Martha's. So come on out and, and support them. And also just a request from area directors of music and organists from area churches, not just Episcopal churches. We're all having a hard time finding replacements and substitutes when we sneak off for vacation. So if you know of anybody that might have retired down in this area that has experience, piano, organ, I don't know, flute, uh, <laughs> organ and piano. Uh, if you want to steer them my way, if they're interested, uh, there is a nice stipend for that, and I can share their information among other directors of music as well. If not, you're all going to be singing a cappella. So, thank you. Good morning. I'm Lee Moore, and Jim and I are doing coffee hour, so please come. There's lots of food. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, about a week and a half ago, we had a very uh, uh, enlightening discussion 
and presentation by the Delaware Sea uh, Grant Organization from the University of Delaware, specifically to cover emergency preparedness in our area. Uh, one of the things that was very enlightening was that uh, things are different today here in Lower Sussex County than they were 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, natural events will impact us a lot worse. Uh, as part of that presentation, uh, we were given some fantastic publications. Uh, this uh, homeowner's handbook for natural hazards. I have a bunch of them. They'll be at the coffee hour available. And But wait, there's more. We have a file of life thing, which some of you all may be familiar with, but it is a use, very useful document to contain critical info that you can either grab yourself if there's an emergency for evacuation or for emergency uh, rescue people to, to have access to. So I'll have all these in the coffee hour out front, uh, out back, uh, which is an incentive to attend. This, <laughs> this, this is uh, not my cane, as some might have thought, but it is a, uh, a prize that we're gonna have at our golf outing. So you're all encouraged to sign up. It's on the 20th of August. And a good time will be had by all, even those who can't putt. <laughs> Fran McKelvey, um, co-chair. Uh, <laughs> I forgot what it was, of outreach. And outreach is now collecting uh, donations for the backpacks for school and the supplies. And uh, we have a little box in the back, the Narthex, uh, that says uh, donations, or you could you know, put it in the offering plate. We also have a box in the, in, in the uh, parish hall where you can put it. Thank you. Okay. As is tradition in St. Martha's, we uh, set aside a small amount of time for people who are having birthdays and anniversaries. Is there anyone that has either one of those today? Really? <laughs> okay, well, let us continue now uh, with our offering. Birthday. Oh, birthday. Birthday? Okay, okay. Yeah.
mercy broken, wine of the soul in mercy shed. By whom the words of life were spoken, and in whose death our sins are shed. by whom the word of life was spoken, and in whose death our sins are dead. Look on the tears by sinners shed. That by your grace our souls are fed. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. This is God's welcome table. As you follow your understanding and belief of Jesus Christ, may his spirit enable your lives to help bring God's kingdom into reality here. Each day, each moment you take breath, you have the option to do just that. And may Christ's spirit through his word and sacrament, strengthen you in purpose to be out in the world and serving him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return 
Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, blood he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this, for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah and Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Because Jesus is our brother, we have the courage to call God our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for all of us who are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived and died and rose again for you. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Okay, one. Okay. The blood of Christ shed for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. Thank you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Feel free. Yep. Oh, thank you. Did they open them? Okay. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Of of heaven. Yes, ma'am. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose true body and blood you have now received, may it strengthen you and preserve you, both now and to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise as we say together the prayer of St. Francis, as found as in, your, in your insert. <clears throat> Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon, where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, bow your hearts and minds unto Christ and receive the benediction. Our Lord bless you and keep you. Our Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up, your, lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us...
and cause thee to stand. I call thee to go, rivers of woe shall not be overflow, for I will be with thee, thy troubles to bless, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials as thy pathway shall guide, my high grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. So that to Jesus had fled for repose I will not I will not desert to his foe so through all hell shall endeavor to shake I'll never no never no never will say Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you.